Hey guys, um, today I wanted to jump on and talk to you about uh, one final sonnet structure, which is called the English sonnet. It is also referred to as the Shakespearean sonnet. Um, he made his own, you know, remember we kind of talked about, you know, that artistic ability and kind of putting your own spin on things. So anyway, I want to review those characteristics with you before we begin to annotate sonnet 130. So within um, an English sonnet, it is structured very similar to the Spencerian in the fact that it is divided up into three quatrains and a couplet. Okay, so same thing there. We've been studying that for a little bit, so nothing new. Um, the difference is the rhyme scheme and where the volta would lie in an English sonnet. Okay, so the rhyme scheme for the Shakespearean sonnet would go as follows. It would be A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. Okay, so that's the difference, the rhyme scheme. Um, we also have the volta being placed in line nine. Remember I talked to you about the Spencerian sonnet and being careful that you don't you don't mark the volta being line nine in his. Um, that is what is typically in the Shakespearean one. Okay, so line nine, and it's usually set off with the words but or yet. Remember those words, those conjunctions are um, signaling the change uh, in thought, argument, whatever the case. Okay, so but or yet, um, signal volta, it's in line nine of the English sonnet. All right, I don't think that there's anything else to kind of review there for the English, um, so we'll just jump right into Sonnet 130. It says that my mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. By the way, this is my favorite one by Shakespeare. My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips are red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. And I grant that I never saw a goddess go, but my mistress, when she walks, treads the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think that my love is rare as any that she had belied in false compare. Okay, so when you're reading this, remember that sonnets are typically love poems, kind of talking about how much they love somebody, and usually they're really nice. Um, and in this case, you're kind of probably like thinking, oh my gosh, like he wrote this about a woman he loves. Like, she, I would run, you know, because he's talking about all these negative things about her. Um, but we're going to break that down, and actually, um, he's going to come off a little sweeter than you think when we, when we look at what he's telling her. So anyway, or it's talking about her. So structurally, we know it's divided into the three quatrains. So um, go ahead and mark that down on your own document. I'm going to do that myself. I didn't actually divide these up the same way as the other sonnets. So just count off your, your four lines each and then mark quatrains. I'll show you what I did in a minute. Oops, that was supposed to be, that's not supposed to be divided there. Okay, so I made a little mistake, you know, even teachers make mistakes, guys. Um, I count off my four lines, I divided it up, I wrote quatrain. I did the same for the second one, I did the same for the third one, and then finally I'm going to mark the couplet. So let me do that and I'll show you just a second. My daughter's on the ground, she's like clinging to my leg, it's distracting. Okay, so anyway, um, so quatrain one, whoop, quatrain one, quatrain two, quatrain three, and then the couplet at the bottom. Okay, let's go into uh, rhyme scheme. So does it follow the traditional English sonnet rhyme scheme? We shall see. So I'm going to read these lines to you, the last words of the last words of each line. Um, it says sun, red, done, head. Okay, so mark the first one with an A. Obviously, does red rhyme with sun? No, it doesn't. So we're putting a B there. Done, does it rhyme with anything? Yes, it rhymes with the first line of that quatrain. So I'm putting an A there. And then head rhymes with red. So a B goes there. Okay, so it, the first four lines, it should be A, B, A, B. I'm going to show you. A, B, A, B. All right. And then um, getting into... The next quatrain, it says, I have seen roses damask, red and white. So white, cheeks, delight, reeks. Um, does white rhyme with anything prior to that? No, it doesn't. So I'm, I'm using a new letter here. In this case, it's going to be a C. So C, cheeks, doesn't, it does not rhyme with anything else. So I'm putting a D there. Delight rhymes with white. 
So I'm putting a C next to delight, and then reeks rhymes with cheeks. So C, D, C, D. C, D, C, D. Man, my C's don't look like C's. Okay, sorry about that. Um, third quad train, it goes like this. No sound, go ground. No does not rhyme with anything prior to, so we assign a new letter to that line and we give it an E. Sound does not rhyme with anything. We're putting an F there. Go, does it rhyme? Yes, it rhymes with the first line of that quadrain. So we're gonna put the letter E. And then ground rhymes with sound. So letter F should be placed there, okay? So showing you the new material here, it would be E, F, E, F. And then the couplet, um, is not going to match anything else that's typical of the English sonnet and we're going to put the letters G and G because rare and compare rhyme. Okay, so this is my final addition to the rhyme scheme, G, G. All right, so it does follow what, uh, what I had said on the PowerPoint. Okay, so let's go into the meaning of the actual uh, sonnet. I, I, like I said, I love this one. It's kind of funny. Um, it is kind of satirizing the traditional sonnet in a way Shakespeare sort of criticizes how everyone describes their women because, you know, they're like, oh, they're so beautiful. They're great. Like their voices are like music. And, um, you know, they're just mostly it's about looks. Um, but in his case, he's a little different. He takes a different approach. Okay. So he says, my mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. Okay, so essentially, my mistress's eyes are not sparkling and shiny like the sun. Um, her lips are not red, which would be an ideal thing um, for women to have like red lips. Think like lipstick, something that, you know, gives her some color. Um, if snow is white, then her skin is the exact opposite. Um, remember that back in those days, it was actually the thing to be um, pale, to have like this porcelain flawless skin. And in her case, she's, you know, she's probably got a little tan going on. Like who doesn't want a tan? Um, anyway, so she is not, she is not porcelain skinned. Her, her lips aren't red. Her eyes don't just glisten. And then finally, um, her hair, if her hair be wires, then black wires grow on her head. So her hair is not this, this like soft and flowy and just gorgeous sort of thing. It's actually kind of coarse um, and, and it just doesn't look the same way as everyone else's would, or at least, you know, what the ideal would be for the time. Okay. Um, let's look at the next quatrain. It says, I have seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes, is there more delight than the breath from which my mistress reeks. Okay, not very flattering here. Um, you know, he says, I know what the color of roses look like. I don't see that in her cheeks. So her cheeks aren't rosy and, and gorgeous. Um, you know, I believe that perfumes have a better smell than the breath that comes out of my girlfriend's mouth. Okay, so it's kind of like an ew moment there. Um, so yeah, she doesn't have nice breath. She doesn't have rosy cheeks and all these other things that he's previously described. Okay. Third quatrain. It says, I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music has a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a, or a goddess go, but my mistress, when she walks, treads the ground. Okay. So he says, I love to hear her voice. But I'm going to tell you right now that it's not this pleasant sounding thing. You know, she doesn't have that like nice voice. I don't know. I imagine maybe some sort of annoying voice. I don't really, you decide what you think that would sound like. Okay. So it's not, it's not musical, if you will. Um, and he also points out that, uh, you know, I, I've never seen goddesses walk. Like, cause, you know, like usually if you think you have a goddess, they are graceful and they just sort of glide everywhere. Um, but even though he hasn't actually seen a goddess do that, like walk, he believes that his mistress is definitely not that kind of graceful person, okay? She kind of treads the ground. Maybe she drags her feet or, you know, something. Maybe she thump, 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 thump as she walks. I don't really know. Um, but it's not this sort of graceful thing, okay? And then finally, so, you know, again, he's kind of like roasting her quatrain after quatrain after quatrain. And, you're, and again, I'm kind of like, you know, if I were her, I'd run for the hills. Like, you're not very nice. 
but then he gives you this couplet. Like it's, <laughs> if you read it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this right now. Um, it's like, it just makes up for all the things that he, that he said previously. You know, he goes, and yet by heaven, I think that my love is as rare as any she belied with false compare. So he says, and even though she possesses all of these, I don't know, unpleasant characteristics, these, these characteristics that most people wouldn't deem beautiful, I believe that my love is even more unique and, and even more strong than any other person's love for, you know, their woman. Okay. Um, you know, he says with false compare, cause he's kind of saying like everyone else kind of compares their women to things that aren't really true, you know? So in a way, like, I guess I got to give Shakespeare credit here because, you know, he's being realistic. Like nobody's perfect. Nobody has all these characteristics. Look at us today. Like, you know, when you're with your significant other, they love you for who you are, all the goods, all the bads. And, and again, your love's special, even if you have all these things, these flaws. So anyway, that's, that's Shakespeare for you there. I, I, I do like that because it is, it's more so the truth. It's, he's a realist. Okay. Anyway, um, let me know if you guys have questions over this one. Um, you know, I'll be getting into pastoral poetry the next time I record. So, um, we're going to shift our gears a little bit and look at different characteristics. So anyway, until then, peace out.